there are probably few things that I can't do. It's just that it would take me three times as long. But I'm quite stubborn and if I find that if there's something that someone asks me like can you do this I'll normally try and find a way to do it so I can say yes. We know from our previous research that if you don't have a hand and you have to live in a world that is designed for people with two hands um, the easiest thing to do is just start using your residual arm what, what should have been your hand um, just to supplement whatever the hand would be doing and accordingly the brain seems to adapt to that, so we've noticed before that the area in the brain that is considered to be the hand area would actually become active uh, when people move their residual arm. But we've also noticed just by having the uh, one-handers come to the lab that this is not the only way for them to account for their hand loss and when you give them uh, more complicated daily tasks where you start seeing that they might use their mouth, they might uh, use their legs in order to um, carry tasks that we would do with our two hands. I think I'm probably, um, yeah, better at using one hand to do things. And I'd like to think that this is slightly more kind of stronger and agile like than a normal, just average left-handed person, you know. I think because the brain has to sort of cope with having to deal with it in different ways, you know, I think the brain, it must sort of affect the brain in some way, you know. Here in the middle, we have the hand area. But of course, if you're born without a hand, there's an interesting question, uh, who's gonna benefit from this freed up brain area? And what we find is that when you ask these one-handers to move their mouth or their feet or their arm in the scanner, we would get the normal representation. Here would be the feet, here would be the arm, and here would be the lips. But on top of that, in addition, you would also get extra activity here in this brain area that we consider to be the hand area whichever body part is used in order to substitute for the missing hand function gets to benefit from increased representation in the part of the brain that controls whatever functions that the hand normally supports. I think having one hand just made me quite quite stubborn and I just kind of want to prove, I, not prove, that's the wrong word, if I am proving to anyone, it's to myself that I'm kind of capable of doing anything that a two-handed person can do. <laughs>